After President Biden's historic trip to Kyiv yesterday, members of the Republican Party have been struggling to stay on message. The president's secret trip here allowed him to frame the narrative in a way that some Republicans have had difficulty responding to. Most of the oxygen got sucked up by the party's extreme MAGA fringe, who called on the United States to halt any additional aid to Ukraine. And that puts the less chaotic Republicans in the conference, who do believe that there's bipartisan consensus on funding Ukraine, in a difficult position. They're facing pressure from both Democrats and fellow Republicans. So today, a group of the less chaotic Republicans, including the Congressman Michael McCall of Texas, who's the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, made the trip here to Kyiv themselves. They literally retraced President Biden's steps. They even tried to one-up the president by calling on the U.S. to provide additional artillery and F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, something that the Biden administration has so far been reluctant to do. The president recently visited, and, and uh, I commend him for uh, coming here, and it's a very symbolic uh, move on his part. We have strong bipartisan support to give Ukraine everything that it needs to win. I will be a very strong voice on uh, both the attack ends, the long-range artillery to hit the Iranian drones in Crimea, in addition to the F-16s. I'm seeing increasing momentum towards getting both the artillery and the planes in. Now, it is notable that in this one instance, when it comes to funding Ukraine, at least some Republicans are making an effort to be on the right side of this issue. Jennifer Rubin is a Washington Post opinion columnist covering politics and policy, both foreign and domestic. Jennifer, it's good to see you. Uh, and I have to say, I, I was a little surprised. I mean, this happened exactly on the same square uh, where uh, Vladimir Zelensky and Joe Biden were. Uh, it was Republicans looking like uh, old school Republicans talking about military support for a country that is uh, at war with Russia. It, it almost feel like they felt like they were just trying to take a little of that messaging back. They knew that that Biden had done a, a, a quite a job with showing up here and showing his strong support. And they wanted to get in on the action, too. I think that's largely right. I think they, uh, whenever the president looks strong, resolute, is respected on the world stage, I think those Republicans who know better get a little nervous that they are going to be pigeonholed as Putin apologists, and they want to kind of distance themselves um, from the crazier Republicans. You also saw in Munich, where they're having the Munich Security Conference, Mitch McConnell yesterday make a very resolute statement in favor of support for Ukraine. So the Republican Party is divided now. The Democrats are not divided. There's nearly 100 uh, percent of the Congress, certainly the Biden administration, is four square behind uh, Ukraine. He gave that very moving, very uh, uplifting speech today. Uh, a little bit of Churchill, a little bit of uh, JFK, a little bit of Reagan. And and I think it's exactly right that there are some Republicans, McCall is the head of the armed services, he's from Texas, who remembers way back when, when Republicans were on the right side in the Cold War, when they were on the right side in terms of helping free people defend themselves. I take this as a positive sign. I hope he does come back and hush up um, the naysayers in his own caucus um, who really do nothing but embarrass themselves and throw uh, Vladimir Putin a lifeline, um, which he will grab onto any hint of division uh, within the West. So that's exactly the so that, point. Obviously, in a, in a good democracy, there are going to be different sides uh, to an issue. But Vladimir Putin has counted on the fact that, uh, first, he thought America wouldn't come to the aid of Ukraine and that NATO would be uh, in disarray. And it looked like that a few years ago. Certainly in Donald Trump, uh, he had a, a president who uh, may not have come to the aid of Ukraine, tried to shake down the Ukrainian president, tried to discredit uh, Marie Yovanovitch, the ambassador here. Uh, he had a, a NATO that didn't look like it was taking itself all that seriously. And that has all changed. And it looked like Joe Biden was sort of underscoring and, and, and highlighting in bold the fact that what you thought isn't actually the case. And that's, that seems to be uh, something that's, that's getting, gaining consensus in the U.S. Absolutely. If you can imagine for a moment, if Donald Trump were still president, would he be in Ukraine or would he be in Moscow? Would he be idling up to Vladimir Putin like he did in Helsinki when he took Putin's side over the national security community in the United States? 
Um, more likely than not. And frankly, um, I think there's um, some basis to believe that the reason why Putin held out is that he hoped that, frankly, Trump would get reelected and would hand him Ukraine on a silver platter, um, which he might well have done. But I think even the critics of um, President Biden have to acknowledge that he not only had a showing of American resoluteness, but that he has stitched together a NATO alliance that is tighter, stronger, and frankly, broader, you mentioned um, two new potential members for NATO, um, than we ever thought possible. Um, NATO has not expanded in a very long time. And thanks to uh, Vladimir Putin and to uh, President Biden, it is a more uh, resolute, it is a brighter and stronger alliance. And you see governments, sometimes reluctantly, but nevertheless, uh, you see Germany reconsidering its very pacifist policy and grudgingly at first, but increasingly going along with supplying uh, the um, Ukrainians. And you've also seen a commitment on Europe, which we have not seen in decades, to try to delink themselves from Russian fuel, from Russian uh, oil and gas supplies. So there's been tremendous progress, I think, in the last couple of years. And you're right. When you consider that the first impeachment, if you remember way back when, in the before times, um, Donald yep. Trump was impeached for trying to extort Zelensky to come up with dirt on Joe Biden. And what was he going to do? He was going to cut off supplies for Ukraine in the middle of a hot war um, so that they would be forced to help him in his campaign. Um, the president of the United States does not engage in such uh, behavior normally. And here, I think he really kind of set a marker. Um, he's saying, I'm brave enough, I'm resolute enough to go to Ukraine because you, Ukraine, are brave and resolute enough to fight for freedom. And I found that you know, quite moving. And I think it's going to be quite effective for him when he comes back and needs to negotiate with Congress for more aid, for more weaponry. And I think he'll be in a, in a strong position to do so.